So let's take a little leap forward in, in time now to the United States, to Harvard University. How old were you when you went there, and what did you study? I was 17 when I went to Harvard, and I started in uh, what I wanted to do was engineering studies or technical studies, and then I switched to Islamic history. Why didn't you go to either Oxford or, or Cambridge? Because you're a British citizen. That was my grandfather's decision and my father's decision. Both of them were agreed that they wanted me to go to an American university. One day you were at Harvard and you heard that you were to be the next Imam, the Aga Khan. Can you remember what thoughts went through your mind that day, that moment? Shock, disbelief, awe? <coughs> it was actually at, uh, in Geneva that I learned because uh, my grandfather's will was uh, read I think the day after he died and it was a long will covering many aspects of his life and his uh, family and uh, the decision came as, as a shock. Uh, you had no idea was, uh, before? You know my grandfather was very much a Muslim family head he didn't discuss his decisions as far as I know with the family members and he could have chosen one of four possible successes there was he had two sons and he had two grandsons and that was his decision but why did he decide to skip a generation I just don't know he gave an explanation in uh, his will uh, which I think uh, with uh, the benefit of hindsight is, is probably uh, the thing that dominated his thinking. He had become Imam when he was eight and he had been there for Imam for 72 years. And I think he felt that during those 72 years so much had happened that he wanted the institution to be led by a much younger person than maybe either of his two sons. And I was just 20 when I inherited the Imam. Was there any unhappiness within the family that you had become the Aga Khan? Not that I'm aware of. I think my father's position was, was delicate, but he could not have been more loyal, more supportive, more understanding. And uh, his uh, uh, integrity in, in responding to that decision was genuinely remarkable. So one day you were a young man in Geneva without a career, mm. and suddenly here mm. you had this very important mm duty in life. Was it a duty? It was a duty. It was above all a challenge. What do you think are the qualities that you'll look for when it's your turn to appoint your successor? I think I, I would hope that the next Imam has a thorough and deep understanding of the faith which he has to uh, represent and uh, lead in its interpretation. I think he must have a good understanding of the issues which the Ismaili community and the countries in which they live uh, will have to be uh, addressed and that is essentially the countries of Asia and Africa. Uh, he will have to have a good understanding of the forces that are at play and uh, that are likely to, to be at play. And therefore he's going to have to be, I think, well equipped to deal with uh, a leadership office. The next Imam cannot be appointed during your lifetime? Uh, he is appointed during my lifetime in the sense that uh, I'm the person who knows who the next Imam would be. But only but he, you. He, only me, but he becomes Imam when I die. Uh, one of the myths surrounding you is that some people in the West think of you as a living God. Mm. Not only is that not true, mm. it is also blasphemous. Absolutely. I mean, uh, as, as, as you know, the... Uh, faith of Islam was revealed at a time when uh, the Arabian continent was idolatrous and idolatry, all forms of idolatry are totally prohibited by Islam. It's certainly true to say that the Western world uh, doesn't necessarily understand uh, the uh, theology of Shiism nor indeed uh, the theology of many uh, mystical sects, whether they are Shia or Sunni or Christian. Mysticism in its, in its uh, essence is difficult. While we're on the subject of myths, it's also not true that you're weighed in gold and <laughs> precious stones and platinum every year <laughs> and the money dispensed to the poor. Mm. No. Um, first of all, 
the Jubilees, as, as a Western fantasy has developed them, were only only existed in in my grandfather's lifetime in the form that they uh, took place, and it was in fact the community leadership that wanted to express public gratitude to the Imam for the leadership that he had provided, and uh, they felt that the best way to do that was to uh, contribute uh, resources in a way where they and the Imam could uh, have a unique uh, memory of these 25 years or whatever the number of years was. And in fact, these resources ended up in creating a number of very important institutions which I still uh, oversee today.